Good morning, everyone. I'm Charles Daniels, Assistant City Manager for Public Safety, and we'd like to welcome you to the groundbreaking of our new facility that will house the training of the uh, police and fire departments. Uh, but before I, I begin my remarks, I would uh, just like to take an opportunity to personally and publicly thank two individuals who otherwise may uh, go unnoticed. Um, the, the great General uh, Hannibal said at one point when he was about to cross the Alps and the, uh, the snow and ice were blocking his passage, uh, all of his uh, soldiers told him that uh, the, the Alps are impassable and there's no way you can get across. Hannibal's response was, we'll make a way or find one. That's where we are today. And we're here largely due to the efforts of two individuals, uh, Randall Harwood and Mark Rauscher. These, these guys have worked tirelessly and effortlessly to try to get this done and uh, just wanted to say thank you for your hard work and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. We're excited to be here this morning to take our first steps towards a state-of-the-art training facility. This facility will undoubtedly make Fort Worth the leader in training professionals. It's what our citizens deserve. It's what our firefighters and police officers deserve. It will ensure that the residents of Fort Worth will have the best trained public service, public safety officers in the city. It will be a $97.5 million structure and will provide the tools necessary for us to produce the very finest public safety officials in the country. We're fortunate this morning to have uh, several distinguished guests with us. Uh, our speakers uh, will have, uh, of course, Mayor Betsy Price. We have uh, the Honorable Councilman Joe Burns, Council District 9, in which this facility will be housed. Uh, I, in my daily job, have the uh, privilege and fun, actually, of working with what I believe the, the best police and fire chiefs in the country, Chief Rudy Jackson and Chief Jeffrey Halstead. So now uh, we'd also like to recognize some of our city council members who we have present. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Zim Zimmerman, Council Member Danny Scarth, Council Member Jungus Jordan, Council Member Dennis Shingleton, who is very good at whistling, <laughs> Council Member Sal Espino, and Council Member Kelly Allen Gray. Also uh, in our audience is our esteemed leader, Mr. Tom Higgins, City Manager, Assistant City Manager Fernando Costa. Uh, representing Commissioner Roy Brooks is Mary Tesfay, and for MedStar, who is another one of our partners, we have the Executive Director Doug Hooten, Medical Director Jeff Beeson, Matt Zavaskowski, and Operations Director Mike D'Agostino. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today, and this structure will represent what we're all about and what we're doing to go forward. It takes a partnership among several entities to make something this big and this exciting happen. So onward and upward, and at this point, I'd like to ask uh, our Honorable Mayor Betsy Price to come up and say a few words. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you here on this cold, rainy day. We might be getting our stock show weather just a little bit late, so that's okay. Isn't this going to be a great facility? I keep hearing from other mayors nationwide about their training centers, and we are so much better in Fort Worth. We have the best firefighters, the best police officers, and the best first responders, and MedStar is a great partner. They deserve the best, and this facility will bring that to them. We will be the envy of the nation and indeed of the area. There are other cities who are already talking about coming in and partnering with us. Public safety is the foundation of a successful city. We'll be recognizing tonight the designation of a safe community, 
A large part of what you do on the streets has helped us achieve that. That safe community designation is only one of two in the state of Texas, and we are only number 300 in the nation. That's quite a coup, and all of you deserve a big hand for helping us achieve that. You know, crime continues to fall as a result of innovative policing, intelligent policing, and neighborhood involvement. Firefighters, thanks to them, our citizens enjoy amazing fire protection. And because my husband's an insurance agent, I know firsthand that because of our firefighters, we get a reduction in our homeowners insurance, and that's a big deal for people. The good insurance ratings continue to be a positive plus for us. We have a remarkable 9-11 system, an outstanding emergency management system. You guys and girls on the front line place face extraordinary challenges in your day to day, and the citizens of Fort Worth appreciate that more than you will ever know. The shooting of Officer Johnny Bell his continued recovery, our thoughts and prayers go to Johnny and his family, but it just heightens the challenges that you face. Fort Worth knows you're the best. We want you to continue to stay the best, and this center will continue to drive that forward, to help you have what, we, what you need. Fort Worth is a state-of-the-art city, and this will be a state-of-the-art training center. With the new center, citizens are confident that you will take that next leap up as innovation moves forward in your training step. And we are here, my fellow council members and I, want to make it the best possible for you. Our partners, you can see on the sign, are the best possible contractors, architects, designs that you can have. It truly will help put Fort Worth further on the map. So thank you all, and thank you to our city staff, to Randall and his crew, Charles, Tom, for what you've done. But thank mostly to our men and women who are on the street daily providing the service to us. We're very proud of you, and we're proud of what this facility is going to bring to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Price. And uh, our next speaker, um, before I ask Mr. Burns to come up, does, does anybody still watch The Simpsons? You know, uh, Mr. Burns is a main character. So Joel has the, the, the name, but have you ever noticed that Tom Higgins looks like Mr. <laughs> so, so I'd li like to ask Council Member Joel Burns. Uh, thank you very much. I was a little worried where he was going with that, and uh, I'm, I'm now a little bit worried about his ongoing employment, but hopefully Tom will, will keep Charles on. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here today. It is a very good day, not only for the entire city of Fort Worth, but it's also a good day for District 9 and the neighborhoods around uh, this new facility. Um, I'm happy that we're here inside the building. It's a little warm and smells kind of funny, but um, I'm happy we're all here. There is no greener green building than to reutilize and adapt existing buildings and to not build new. And we're very fortunate that there's a facility here that we can adaptively, adaptively reuse and that we can build uh, the new headquarters just outside here uh, to our north. Um, it is in down economies when uh, smart businesses and smart municipalities and smart cities plan for the future and I'm happy that we're not only planning for the future for our police and firefighters, but we are investing in our future for police and firefighters to the tune of almost $100 million in this new facility. This is a great investment not only in our city but in our neighborhood. It, contrib it contributes to our ongoing uh, strategy of uh, diverse diversifying where we situate our city facilities and we're going to continue to do that. I know Sal and others have have been strong proponents of that and I'm happy to see this facility come to the south side. Um, it's a facility that uh, all of us, whether we represent folks on the south side like uh, Jungus and Kelly and I do or uh, whether or not you represent the north side, uh, we're happy to have this facility here. Um, this is a great investment. It's a great way to get a lot of bang out of the buck by reusing uh, these two existing structures that we already have here and getting more for our police and firefighters because they uh, deserve the very best and that's what we're going to build here. I know our neighborhoods are excited to see the additional police cruisers up and down Hemp Hill. As someone who lives two blocks off of Hemp Hill, I'm happy to see you guys driving up and down more often too. Um, and we're happy to have you guys here. Thank you.
thank you again for everyone being here. And Charles, if you still have your job, I'll hand it back off to you. Thank you, Mr. Burns, and I do have my resume updated. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that support. Um, all right, uh, our next speaker is a gentleman who I, I mentioned earlier that part of my, my job is really fun, um, that uh, I get to work with um, quality and, and high-level individuals uh, in our public safety divisions. Um, Chief Rudy Jackson. Rudy is an absolute pleasure to work with, and I am convinced beyond a doubt that he is the uh, leader of the best fire department in the entire nation. Um, you never hear much about uh, the, the chief, but I think he prefers it that way. But his, uh, his folks respect what he does, and uh, the citizens appreciate everything that goes on. At this point, Chief Jackson. Good morning. Great day today in the city of Fort Worth. Uh, I can imagine some 40 years ago, they were having a groundbreaking as well. The weather was probably like this as well, but 40 years of this facility we had, we have currently now is, is, is great, and this is gonna be a great facility as well. So my, my goal here today is to talk a little bit about the history of the training center. In the early 1960s, the need arose for a new training center. And I'm told prior to the training facility we have now, we used to have a facility right behind fire station number two, which is on Texas. It was a tower. And as far as the fire department's concerned, they grew obsolete for us, so we need to look somewhere else. So the city began to search for a site for a joint police and fire training center. Several sites were searched, were looked for, and were investigated. However, one was found to be either, all but one was found to be either available or inadequate. They selected a site. It was a nine-acre a nine-acre track, uh, contingent to what was called the Valley View Edition, which was located at Congress Avenue and West Calvert Street. It was the Joint Training Center site, and it was selected for four reasons. It was zoned heavy commercial. It was above the juncture of the West and Clear Fork of the Trinity River, and it provided free water for the firefighters because we needed water back then. We had suction hoses. The land acquisition was at a minimum because a major portion of the land was owned by the city as well as by Tarrant County Water District Number 1, and it was centrally located. So in 1967, the Joint Training Center was built. The Fort Worth population then was 380-something thousand folks. We had about 300 members on the Fort Worth Fire Department, and those firefighters then were called fire men. And the mission was to fight fire. That was our main mission. The footprint of the center at that time was 41,000 square feet. Today, the current center, the footprint is about 61,000 square feet. Our population is over 750,000 folks. We are called firefighters now, and our mission has expanded to include EMS, hazardous materials, um, technical, res technical rescue, confined space, trench rescue, and on and on. We have certainly outgrown our current facility. Several generations of firefighters have passed through the doors of the Cato High Tower Police and Fire Training Center. Years of heavy use has taken the toll on the facilities like the drill tower and the burn building, so much so that we can't use those facilities anymore. We can't burn in them. We lease those facilities. Now today we have the lease facilities to provide training from several entities and from several different locations just to provide the basics. We have simply outgrown that facility while the training requirements for structural firefighting and EMS has increased. So we are excited to see this project on the way and to begin a new era in training Fort Worth firefighters. This new facility will provide today's and tomorrow's firefighters with a state-of-the-art, high-quality facility for years to come with a footprint of about 500,000 square feet. So we look forward to a functional, something that works, two-story class A burn building, an eight-story tower, uh, areas designed so we can do vehicle extrication, trench confined space rescue, high angle rescue, fuel spill training. The mock village will simulate realistic 
real world situations that will prepare our, fire, prepare our firefighters for incidents they will encounter today in today's world as, as well as room to grow for tomorrow's problems that we will handle that we can't even fathom today. So in closing, I truly want to say to the citizens of Fort Worth that this investment in this new training center will help bring high quality public safety to this community for many years to come. Thank you and to all the citizens, we appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you. Chief uh, Halstead, there's, I see only four news cameras here. Is that enough? <laughs> oh. Is Brandon here? <laughs> I, I don't see Brandon, so. The, <laughs> I, I won't go into a uh, litany of, of all the good things that Chief Halstead has done since he's been here, uh, but I can say of recent news and what's most important to our, our council and the citizens is that crime is going down. So I present to you Chief Jeffrey Halstead. I told Charles this is enough as long as Brandon Bennett's not here. So Brandon, are you here? Where's Brandon? Because we have a standing joke between the two of us. Um, I don't know what to say other than I want to say a, a sincere thank you to, to Mark as well as uh, Randall and especially our staff. Um, you know, three years ago when uh, Tom Higgins was my boss and we were talking about how to plan for the future of police and fire training, um, it was a challenge to say the least year after year after budget cut after budget cut, but I can only stand on behalf of over 1,500 police officers that love to serve the city and say thank you. Thank you so much for believing in our mission and for investing into a future 50 to 100 years of this great city. Um, without a doubt, you know, Rudy and I share a lot of time together and we get to uh, visit a lot about our professions and how they, they really need to stay joined. And the fact that they're going to be here training together as partners is a strong message to every profession in the United States that we are a community and we stand together in the mission of public safety. And uh, Rudy and the rest of our fire partners, it's an absolute pleasure to be a part of, of your public safety partnership. And I speak for everyone in the police department. When you look at today's training needs, it's extremely complex because the trends of policing are ever changing with the fastest growth of technology we've experienced in our entire generation. Uh, we have to have real-time training that's applicable yet efficient for the taxpayers. And we have to balance those needs yet driving down uh, headlines and lawsuits and liability concerns. And that's exactly what our training staff has accomplished. And I, I stand in appreciation for all of them because uh, through other cuts within our administration and budget, they have proven a strong training product. And they've done an outstanding job. And they work closely with the fire partners as well at the current facility. But when you look at our new facility that we have, uh, we will be investing in probably what is the most dangerous parts of our job, driving a vehicle and carrying a firearm. And this investment here uh, will show that we are committed to making a safer police force, and, and that is going to be a great thing for our community, but also it strives on an education standard within a good facility for graduating the best police recruits in the nation. As far as the future uh, training for all police personnel, that without a doubt is going to be one of our most complex issues, and I want to say a sincere thank you to our uh, planning and, and building design team. Uh, they have been very, very gracious and offering a lot of input for our uh, expertise as well, as well as the fire department. So thank you so much for being partners with us and making sure we can serve today's needs as well as the future. But anytime you see a national news event related to public safety, two things you will always see. You always see the police and the fire department deployed together in that effort and you will always see a new and challenging type of crime or criminal act that we will have to continue to plan for and invest in that training application for our future public servants within our community. 
Now we have to trend for intelligence-based uh, policing and a real-time crime center, which will be housed here. So literally within minutes of a crime trend or a serial offender within our community, every stakeholder can be in the room working, planning, and solving these issues together exactly the way we have done this project here. I just wanted to say on behalf of everyone within the Fort Worth Police Department, we appreciate the community support. It is overwhelming and it is without a doubt the greatest gift we could ever receive from this great city. So as their chief, I am humbled that I get to be a partner of such a great event and this investment will prove one of the greatest investments for the next 50 if not 100 years with our great city. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, at this point, uh, I'd like to ask all of you if you would uh, give a round of applause to uh, our speakers and our city council members. You know, this morning on the way over, the, this is uh, the closing of our official part of the program. Uh, I thought I was, uh, would close with something uh, kind of erudite from one of the great philosophers from the past, uh, Aristotle, Socrates, or Plato. Uh, instead, um, I chose the American philosopher Yogi Berra, <laughs> who said uh, famously one point, uh, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. So we're at the point now where we've, we've taken that fork and we're about to move forward. Um, so if uh, we can, I think we're on the precipice of uh, something, something great, uh, not only for the city and District 9, but for the country. We'll, we'll serve as a model. So now I think we're ready to play in the dirt. Uh, we've, uh, I'd like to ask uh, the mayor and uh, council members, uh, Mr. Higgins, uh, Fernando Costa, who is our assistant city manager for infrastructure, uh, if all of you would uh, come up, uh, Randall, and uh, if you come up uh, behind the table here, we have the hard hats and the shovels, and uh, we'll uh, do the official groundbreaking.